Well, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen me haul the Toro Time Cutter dozens of times in this 6x12 enclosed trailer. But what you haven't seen on the channel, because we haven't had video of it, is me hauling the motorcycles. I hauled the WR250R, the XT250, I hauled the Gravely, I hauled the push mowers, I've hauled the four-wheeler with the snowplow on it. I've used this trailer a lot. We've hauled furniture, we've gone to auctions and picked up goods at the auction and hauled them home in the trailer. So we've really used this since we bought it. And this video is a little bit about that trailer. Hi, I'm Chad and this is Purple Car Life and in today's video, we're talking trailers. And specifically, this six by 12 CarMate enclosed trailer. And in the video, I wanna give you some tips, some things I've learned after having owned this trailer for a number of years, some suggestions that make using an enclosed trailer much easier. So let's get started. Our Ford F350 diesel Super Duty is a pretty tall tow vehicle. You can see I've got a two inch drop and a two inch ball on here right now. Now I actually use two different setups with this trailer depending on where I'm going. If I'm going to the cemetery, this is my setup two inch drop on the back of the F350. If I'm going somewhere else, I use this six inch drop and let me show you why. Now, when we go to the cemetery, we're coming up a road, down a little dip, and then the cemetery road is like this. So when the truck pulls into the cemetery road up this incline, that makes this point a low point where the ball hitch is and where the tongue of the trailer is. And even with the jack all the way up, with the six inch drop, the bottom of the tongue jack, the tongue stand, hits the, dr hits the driveway of the cemetery every time. Now I was worried if I went to the two inch drop, the front end would be too high and the back would hit. But let me show you why that doesn't happen. You can see here that the rear axle is quite a ways towards the back of this trailer. I like that for several reasons. We've got a good heavy duty truck, so any weight that's in the front of the trailer it's fine for it to be on the tow hitch of the truck. No problem there. I like the wheels being a little farther back because that keeps the back end a little bit more up off the ground. So if I use a taller ball, like the two inch drop I showed you on here, even though that gives me a slant like this, when I pull in the driveway, since the tires are so far towards the back, they keep the back elevated enough that the back does not hit the ground of the road when I'm pulling into the cemetery. So that's why for the cemetery, I use the two inch drop ball hitch. But like I said, for everything else, other than going to the cemetery, I like the six inch drop. It keeps the trailer nice and level behind the truck. Now let's talk about making the connection. You saw this type of hitch is like a raise and lower system. So that's when it's up, ready, for the, ready to accept the ball. And that's when it's locked down. Now I always recommend putting a pin through here. I've got two different options. I've got this option that came with the trailer, attached to the trailer. It's a nice pin, slides through and hooks on itself, keeps it from bouncing out, keeps this securely locked to the ball but that is removable. Someone could disconnect this, remove the trailer. So if I'm parking the trailer without the truck or if I'm parking the trailer somewhere where I'm not gonna be around it, I use this system. This has a key to it that unscrews this connection. And what that allows me to do is put this bar through here screw this back on and then I've got a locked connection that someone would have to have a key to remove. 
Now, like I said, I only use this if I'm not going to be around or if I'm leaving the truck or the trailer somewhere, like overnight, for example, or for a few hours while we're eating something. But this is a nice system. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link to this down below. So today I use this lock because I'll be with my truck and trailer the entire time. The next thing you want to do is connect your safety chains. And here in Pennsylvania, these need to crisscross. So this one goes here. You can see I store them on the side they connect to. I just hook them like this over there temporarily. And then I hook them here on my truck when I'm ready. And that keeps them crossed, which is what is required. And then here's my light connection. It was a four prong plug, but I use this adapter to make it a seven prong. It, I think it just stays more securely attached. Then this is the jack. You saw I cranked it down. Then I fold this back to hold it in place so that if I need to put the tailgate down, there's no interference. There's only a few things I do on a regular basis to keep this lubed up. One is this jack. I go ahead and use some oil and just put it down in the tube there. There's also a little hole in this side to put some oil down in. And I coat this top with it just so that when I am cranking, it doesn't squeak as much. One of the things I really like about the CarMate brand, they use the Dexter Easy Lube axles. So I can just pop this rubber cover out. Sometimes a little screwdriver is helpful. Pop that out. I can see that we're still pretty good. That will slide out as it needs, as it is full with grease and slide in as it needs grease. But we'll go ahead and give it a couple pumps here. Put this dust seal back over top. You won't want to have a raggy with you because this is pretty messy. Now, as of the time of this filming, we are not in any way affiliated or sponsored by CarMate Trailers. We'd love to be sometime in the future, but right now we're not. This is just a local Northwest Pennsylvania company that I think makes a superior product. Now, I looked at multiple brands of enclosed trailers before we bought this one. Again, this is a 6x12 by CarMate. It does have the angled V-nose front, so it's got a little bit of extra space there in the front. Um, but we looked at other trailers that were less expensive. You know, there's a lot of brands out there for enclosed trailers. Many of, them, many of them are made in the Indiana, Ohio, Michigan area, and some of those brands are really good. Some of them, though, are not so good. They're a lot more cheaply made. You know, if you look at the side panels inside, they're not as good quality. If you look at the roof, it's not an all one piece sealed roof. If you look at the floor, it doesn't have a lifetime warranty like this one does. So there's a lot of differences between these trailers. Some of them didn't have the Dexter axles. Some of them didn't have the 15 inch tires. Um, some of them didn't have LED lights, which I really wanted. So when I looked at everything, even though the car mate wasn't the cheapest, for me it was the best because I wanted a trailer that would last me a long time, would hold up to the wear and tear that it's going to take, and something that I was proud to be towing behind me, not just some falling apart uh, piece of junk that was going to cause havoc on the road for me or someone else.
Our CarMate trailer does have the nice gate ramp, which is awesome. It's got this spring-loaded cable that helps you lift it up and down, keeps some of that weight from being held by your arms as you're raising and lowering the gate. And here's the inside of the trailer. Come on in, I'll give you a better look. We did mention before that we made some changes to this trailer. We painted the floor a nice gray color with a little bit of an anti-skids coating onto it. You can still there, you can see there's still some skidding when you're going up and down the deck if your tires are wet or if there's any slope to what you're going up beyond just the ramp. We added this E-Track, which I absolutely love. I added it on both sides and I added a higher rail up above. I'll show you in a minute. But we also added these tie down points and we put eight of them in this trailer, four on each side. Gives you a great way to tie down a motorcycle, lawn mower, zero turn mower, anything that you need to fit in here and hold down to the floor. These are great. And they, I like that they are recessed down in when you don't need them, so they're out of the way. You can see one, two, three. The fourth one is actually underneath here. Four, five, six, seven, and the fourth one's up there, eight. And then here's that E-Track. I ran it all the way up to here on this side. And then let me show you the other side. Since this side has the man door and the work light, I only ran it partially one low level and one higher level. Now this, if you had something taller, you could hook into here and hold it like a mirror against the wall. Whereas the other side, if you had something longer or a dresser, that can all attach there. So lots of versatility here, thanks to the E-Track system. Now let me show you what I'll haul here in the nose of the trailer. I've got two spare tires. I think it's always a good idea to have at least one, but two is even better. I've got a broom to broom this out. I've got some foam. So if I'm attaching something to the wall, I don't want it to get scratched as I'm hauling it. You know, the E-Track system is great, but it is a piece of metal on the wall. So I put this between whatever I'm hauling in the wall. I also have from Harbor Freight some moving blankets. So I keep at least three of those in here with me. I do keep some reflective pylons. So if we would have a flat tire or an issue where we're parked along the road, these are great to put up to let people know, uh, to give you some increased visibility and keep things a little bit more safe. I keep three padlocks all keyed the same here in the trailer. That way I can lock the back gate and the side door with a padlock that only uses one key for all three locks. I do like to keep things organized, so I keep all my E-Track straps, tape measures, and attachment points right here in this box. There's several different things these pieces do, but let me show you a little bit about how they hook up to the wall. The ratchet straps, the bar connector, connectors, anything that goes on this E-Track decking uses the same system. Very easy to use. There is a clip right here. So what I do is I push that, push the clip in, up onto the track, down, and then it's locked in place. So these are just attachment points if I needed to pull off of something or attach something to the wall. The ratchet straps attach in the same way. You can wrap it around something, then ratchet it tight and it holds it against the wall. Here's a different type of loop hook. Works the same way, it's pretty heavy duty. But you can see I'm just using this one to hold my lighter weight straps that I use more regularly for the zero turn mower uh, when I'm strapping it here into the trailer. Other things that I keep with me in the trailer, a bottle jack in case I need to jack, the jack up the trailer to replace a tire, a big black garbage bag either to put something in if I needed to here in the trailer to keep it from rolling around or to lay on underneath the trailer if I did have to do some work under the trailer. I've got a little container that just has rope, some bungee straps, and some other little straps in it. Got a milk crate that's got some gloves, more bungee straps, and some heavier straps. And then this bin is full of additional ratchet straps with these type of hooks to hook stuff down to the floor. Now I just organized this all last night. If you start taking things out and using them, it can get a little messy in here. I don't always put things away right away after I use them as I should. So 
I took the time last night, it was driving me a little bit crazy, and organized all this space. So again, this is a 6x12, 2014 CarMate enclosed trailer. We're super happy with it. We've owned it since 2015. We bought it as a leftover, brand new stock. So it's a 2014 model that we bought in 2015. Um, we've been super happy with it. I love the addition of the E-Track and the in-floor D-rings. I think that really helps make this a more versatile trailer. I love the lifetime floor warranty. I believe that's still active. I'm not sure you need to look it up on the CarMate trailer website. I love this single piece roof, nice heavy duty roof. Here's another thing I noticed the difference on. You know, I looked at, like I said, a lot of different brands and I won't name those other brands, but I looked at trailers in Michigan. I looked at trailers in Ohio and I came back here in Northwest Pennsylvania and bought from the local dealership that was a little bit more expensive because I think it's a much better trailer. One of the ways you could tell is these sidewalls. These are a much thicker wood than I saw in some of the other examples. There are studs 16 inches on center, made attaching my E-Track much nicer and made it a much sturdier system. Some of the other trailers did not have that 16 inch on center studs in the walls. I like the V nose front, it gives me this extra storage room. So right here is straight across. So mostly my tires and all this stuff is in front, just in the V nose, which makes the rest of the trailer really usable for me. This trailer does have a nice ventilation system. This can be opened or closed and lets the air come in from an outside vent. And there's another one down there right behind where the camera is now. So air can come in here up high, out down low there. Nice ventilation through the trailer as you're traveling. So if you've got a zero turn mower or a tractor in here and you're worried about the gas fumes, these vents do a nice job of circulating air out the trailer. Another thing I really liked about the CarMate brand is this heavy duty ramp. As you can see, it's a nice piece of angle iron here. It's got the nice thick plywood inside it. And then it's got these really nice galvanized heavy duty latches. And like I said, I use the same keyed padlocks on the three lock system so that one key opens any of them. Here's where that ventilation I mentioned comes out. So there's one of these on the front upper area of the other side, draws the air in, circulates through the trailer, and comes out here. Here's the LED lighting on the fender. Nice heavy duty fenders on this trailer. And I like the LED lighting there, orange on the front, red on the back. Nice long LED strip lights on each side for your brakes, turn signals, and running lights. LED light bar on the top for when you brake little marking lights here. So right here and on the upper front, you've got LED marking lights from the side of the trailer that people can see. You've also got reflectors. Now the trailer could use a bath, but here's one of those reflectors, LED marking light I mentioned. Here's this nice man door, same heavy duty latch style. Some trailers had a man door with just like an RV latch style that's not nearly as heavy duty and not as securable. I like that I can close this it really presses it shut for a watertight seal. And then I can put a padlock through here. Here's how nicely that door works. And then here's just another example of a little step. They put a nice rain gutter above the door so the water's not running down and tempted to go into that seal of the door. It hits the gutter, diverts down to the side. So there's some of the specs you can see here. This is a 3,500 pound trailer. There's your tire size and compressed air, 50 pounds per tire. They're 205-75-15C tires. Here the sticker's kind of faded, but it did say lifetime plus five warranty. Here's the warnings and information on the tongue of the trailer. So there you go, some tips and tricks that I use for this six by 12 enclosed trailer. We really like it, we use it all the time. You've seen it mostly to haul the zero turn mower up to the cemetery and to that new property that we're mowing this summer. But we've used it to haul furniture. My parents took it down to my sister's house in Texas and hauled some things for her there. So this trailer has worked great for us. Just remember, as you're trailer shopping, 
that the cheapest trailer isn't always the best. Like I said, there's lots of other cheaper trailers than this 6x12 Carmate, but you want to look at how long it's going to last, how well it's built, and kind of the, the feeling you get about the trailer when you're taking a look at it. If it looks cheap, it's probably going to feel cheap to you and probably won't hold up. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below on what trailer you use. If you've got better organization tips, I'd love to hear. I'd love to get all that stuff out of the front nose so I could put other stuff in the nose of the trailer, but I don't have anywhere else to put those spare tires in the jack and all my straps. I've actually thought about putting a, a system up above, like a shelf to put that stuff on. That might be a good idea. So I'd love to hear your ideas on how you organize an enclosed trailer without taking up the footprint of the width and the length as much as possible so you can haul as much as possible in the trailer. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you the next time. Like I said, you want to run these tires at 50. So once again, I'll use the Astro AI chuck and inflator. We're at 37. We let off at 43.6. I don't know if you heard in the background, but we have an owl close by and he hoots not only at night, he hoots way more at the nighttime, but he also hoots during the daytime.